said he's a licensed marriage and family therapist joining us in the studio this morning. And, uh, Doctor, you're telling us that you've already seen some of your local patients having effects from what's happening over in Boston. Yeah, a trauma reaction. People who have a trauma history, when they see something like this, it re-stimulates old thoughts and memories, and they start then they fixate on all the news coverage and it makes it worse. Yeah, you know what, forget that we're on TV and you, you don't have to be nice to us. D does TV make it worse? Because let's be honest, we've been on the air for uh, four hours and 15 minutes and we're talking about this again and again and again. Are we helping or hurting? Both. Okay. It's a blessing and a curse. Yes. Some people really need to process and debrief and they need to try to make sense out of senselessness. So mm -hmm. for some people it's helpful. For other people though, it re-traumatizes them. It stresses them out. You know, we haven't read them on the air. We've gotten a few comments of people saying, I really like your show. i got to turn it off today. Yeah, it's just exactly. too hard you to watch. You understand that, yeah. don't you? Yeah. yeah. And I've had to do the same thing as a trauma survivor. I, I, would, I went in to get enough information about this so I would know what's going on. Sure. But after about 10 minutes, okay, let's pull back a little bit. Is it, um, is it a rule of thumb that if you find it's affecting you negatively, get away? And if you're interested and you're feeling it's not affecting you, more information yeah. might be better? For some people, more information is better. For others, it's really important to back off of that, call somebody you trust, and get your stress levels down. And what's, what's going to be the scene in Boston as the people who yeah. have been there? I mean, we have 500,000 people that were spectators watching this, and the, the runners themselves who are just going to need so much help processing. What are their first steps? The first step is to find somebody that they can talk to where they can debrief. Critical incident debriefing is so good for first responders, but for these people that were witnessing this, a lot of them will have survivor's guilt. Mm. And they'll have to talk about that. A lot of the runners that came in before the explosion, they're going to both feel, be feeling lucky and guilty at the same sure. time. So they need to find somebody they can trust. Uh, it can be a therapist, a counselor, a minister, somebody that they can trust to talk to about their feelings so they can get that out. Uh, this is a, maybe an odd question, but I'll ask. What, what's the batting average for people who have suffered a profound loss? I mean, I've lost a limb or I've lost a wife or a child. G getting past that and having a life? Uh, it depends how quickly they get psychological help. The research is clear. The sooner to the incident people start getting counseling and help, the better. I have one patient that didn't get help for six months, and it's been three years that he's been living in hell, oh as he gosh. calls it. Well, you know, and I, and I think now of our uh, soldiers uh, that have returned. returning warriors. Uh, you know, who have seen terrible things and months go by before they can even come home and I know that's a uh, yeah. I don't know you work with, with them. And I've got some emails from some of these people, it's re-stimulating them, it says I thought I left that behind. Yeah, but they're seeing an explosion, an IED in a trash can in, in Boston. Right. Dr. Grinstead, I wish we had more time, thank you very much for coming Thank in. you. Thanks for your work. Thank, thank you so much.